Hey everybody, welcome back to the highway with Kyle Shut. Hot damn, we made it another week. Today we're joined by Mr. Paul Crosby from Saliva, and also uh, we're going to talk about his new band, Cold Words, along with all kinds of other new metal fun stuff. As always, if you like what you've been hearing on the program, click that subscribe button, click that follow tab, boom goes the dynamite, see what I did there? And if you want to go one step further and help keep this train rolling, you can find us at patreon.com slash the highway. For a few scant dollars a month, you can help warm my cold, dead heart. You can get some Kyle Shut merchandise. You can even get a private guitar lesson from me. And you can send me messages, and we can just be friends. That's why we're here. We also got to give some mad love to our sponsors, Heil Sound. Because if you like the way I sound, it's because there's a Heil in front of me. Now, y'all already know that I can walk the walk, so that means it's time to talk the talk. Let's do things my way. The Highway. How you doing, bud? Man, I woke up again today, man. So I guess I'm I'm pretty good. The other day, man, I seen some people living under this bridge. So I guess I can't really have any very many complaints, you know. That is a wonderful way to look at the world. And you woke up in Texas too, am I right? In Houston, yep. Houston, man, I love Houston so much. It's a uh, yeah. We're right. We're right in the uh, middle of winter right now, but tomorrow it should be back in the eighties. So, so. <laughs> You're all right. Well, thanks so much for coming on the program, man. I, I'm really excited about uh, getting into some of this because uh, you've accomplished so much, and, and and the industry has changed so much uh, since you got into it. And uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to pick your brain about um, just kind of how you got into music uh, and just what made you want to you know play drums and, and jump in a van and, and eventually just like uh, you know tell the world goodbye. <laughs> uh well okay um uh, well I, when i was like uh, a lot younger I, I was uh i wasn't really into like playing music um and by younger i mean like before i was like 10 you know uh-huh. um so shortly after that uh we my my parents had adopted my adopted brother and uh he he would always uh he didn't have a drum set whenever you know we adopted him but he would he was always you know telling me how he played drums. He was always air drumming and stuff. So I, and I kind of looked up to him. So that's kind of what started, uh, sparked my curiosity on, on drums and stuff like that. So, uh, and then I got into skateboarding shortly after that. And, uh, one of my buddies played uh, Metallica master of puppets on the jam box while we were skating. And it kind of blew my mind and changed my whole perspective on things. Totally. Um, so from that, from that, from that point on, I was like, I want to, I want to play drums and I want to, you know, I want to like play music for a living. And then it kind of just stuck, man. I kind of was, was stayed on it. It never, it never faded away like a fad. You know what I uh-huh. mean? It, it was, uh, um, it, it just stayed with me. That's awesome. And uh, whenever, because um, I know uh, you're mostly known from playing with uh, Saliva and uh, your, your new band uh, with your sons, uh, Cold Wards, uh, just dropped their first single, which I think is awesome. I, I really want to get into that later. But um, do, uh, were you living in Memphis at the time whenever you joined Saliva? Absolutely. Yeah. That's um, uh, such an awesome music town. It's so different. And like even as much as uh, everywhere has changed over the years, Memphis is still really gritty, you know, and it's got this like just attitude yeah. to it. But like, what was it like back in the, uh, the late 90s? Man, it was when it was uh, it was awesome being young and and uh, into music and especially into rock music at that time. We had a really great uh, music scene. Local bands would pack out shows everywhere. You know, I mean, it, it was just, it was a really 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 great time. I moved uh, from Memphis to Houston back in two thousand and nine. Um, actually, my son Zach, who's in my other band, Cold Words, uh, he still lives in Memphis. Um, I go there and visit from time to time, uh, and it, it's it's still great and all. Um, but like I said, in the, in the late '90s, man, mid late '90s, even before that, it was it was really really epic and very supportive for for rock music. So uh, it was awesome. Yeah, and and coming uh, especially like th- those were the days when like you know rock radio was still huge, and uh, you know MTV had had sort of just changed its format from playing more like like grunge and alternative kind of stuff to like really focusing on uh what eventually became known as new metal 
um, uh, that that was the kind of like starting with corn and stuff like '95. They just they used to play corn videos at like three in the morning, and that was it. But then pretty soon, yeah, you know, like Kid Rock and and Corn and um, uh, bands like you know Saliva and everything just like just dominated that last wave yeah. of uh, of MTV. And um, yeah, I just wanted to because the industry has changed so much since then, and uh, I just uh, wanted to just see what it, what it was like uh, riding that wave because. Um, it's, saliva came up so fast like that was back when like labels still had an, enough money to like throw at their their new acts you know and uh just uh, what, what was that like just uh riding that roller coaster it was epic it was definitely at the time a dream come true um you know it, it from like i said from the time i from the moment when i was young and i just and i and i was like this is what i want to do I always truly 150% believed that I would get it, be in the band, have success, get a record deal and do all of the things that we were actually able to accomplish. So for me at that time, it was like, wow, it was like winning the Powerball. You know what I mean? Totally. So um, it was epic and it was a killer time for rock music, man. We got to tour, either tour with or be on the same festivals with and hang out with all of these huge bands that we looked up to, that I, you know, landmark bands of that time. And and I mean, it spawned in. We got to do, we got to tour for two and a half months opening for Kiss and Aerosmith. I mean, you know, it doesn't get a whole bunch better than, you know, bigger than that. That's insane. So, Those are two of my favorite bands and I still have never seen either of them. It sucks. <laughs> and I got to play with them and hang out and, you know, meet them. And we got to play WrestleMania 18 with, with Drowning Pool. Uh, I mean, so many huge, huge events. Uh, you know, it, it's crazy. Ladies and gentlemen was like, we used on a, a massive PlayStation 2, I uh-huh. think it was back in the day commercial. I mean, all types of movies, video games. It, it was, it was, it was awesome, man. I'm not going to lie. Those days are, you know, for anyone, those days are, are pretty much gone. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, it's great to have those memories, man. We were, we, we were one of the last ones, you know, to get platinum records and, and all that good stuff. I mean, those are few and far between these days, you know yeah, what I'm absolutely. saying? To, so. Totally. Yeah. Unless you're like Adele or something, you know, and then <laughs> right, of course, yeah, it's still obtainable. It's just, almost on the just this side of impossible you Uh know what i mean Uh do you have an actual like platinum framed record do you have any of those in your house i sure do i have gold it's (laughs) platinum i got a grammy nomination we were our very first single ever your disease was nominated for best hard rock performance we were up against uh i know lincoln park was one of them there was two or three other big bands. It was so long ago, um, yeah. but Lincoln Park won, and we weren't mad. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, as long as you got your name up there. Uh, were you at the ceremony? Right. Uh, yeah, we did. We actually got to go to the ceremony. We were there for like three days. We got to go to all the pre-parties. Then we got to go to the thing. We got to go to all the after parties. I mean, it was uh, you know, the time of our life, man, for sure. <laughs> I've, I've always... Like yeah, like you said, just just even having the nomination uh, would be rad because uh, the the closest that we ever got was um a lot of I don't know if a lot of people know this, but to even get to that point where you're nominated, uh, the the Grammys have have like a board of uh, of members that all vote on all these things, but the people that are on the board are so old that they don't even really know what they're voting on or anything. So this that they have this right. team of people, uh, younger people that put together this newsletter. Uh, for the the board that votes and to let them know like here's a big list of bands that you should be voting for. And uh, the closest yeah. we ever got was we were the first band on that list one time. We still didn't get the nomination. That's fine. But uh, <laughs> right after, yeah, this, after a certain was, amount of time, we're just like, ah, screw it. You know what I mean? But uh, it was really cool to get the nomination on our first single ever. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Not, I mean, as an as a signed band. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So that was pretty pretty cool. It was like, wow, we're coming out of the starting gate pretty good, man. I think our we had our first gold record. I think within the, within four to six months, we were getting awarded a a gold record, and then you know a Grammy nomination. So it was pretty it was pretty cool, man. That's awesome. That 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 uptick. Uh, having perspective on it you know what i mean when you take like enough time goes by and you look back like it, it might seem like a natural progression and stuff like that but when you like take some time and like look back at it it doesn't it just happens so fast you know what i mean <laughs> like, it does man wild. it does and it did yeah 
Uh, That's did, for sure. Did you guys ever uh, slug it out in a van or anything like that, or was it kind of one of those things where you just hit and, and, and instantly there was enough money there to just like start having a bus and, and getting on like crazy tours like that? Well, keep in mind we were a band. Saliva formed in '96. That uh-huh. first record didn't come out until 2001. Um, <laughs> we slugged it out in a uh, minivan, station wagons, all kind of stuff. Now, as far as uh, when the single hit radio, even before the first you know record on uh-huh. Island on Island uh, before every six seconds was released. We did. We uh, I think we first started our first official tour as a signed band. I believe we had like an RV, um, not a huge one either, but it was it was better than a van because yeah. you know you, you could go, you could have somewhere to go pee. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And sleep um, uh, for like a month, and then stuff started popping off, and then we went right into a bus. But like I said, the earlier years, the three years or so struggling to get that record deal, we. We did some, you know, some. We slugged it out. Trust me, we earned our we we earned our keep, man. Hell yeah, dude! And so it's it's we we actually have something in common that I wanted to see. I, I understand how it goes sometimes when uh, you do so many tours and you have so many bus drivers and, and you forget about them. But uh, we have a, a, a bus driver in common, uh, a guy named Joel McCraney. Do you remember him? Oh, I know. I remember Joel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He drove for us for shoot a couple of years. He, maybe he was a he, character, yeah. man. It's like whenever he wasn't out with us, he was uh, out with y'all. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that dude he's a, was new, a trip. he's a Louisiana guy, right? Uh-huh, Is he uh-huh. not? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. used to be a real big boy. I mean, I'm it, it, over three hundred pounds at least, and uh, he he was just hilarious. Everything that came out of his mouth cracked me up. But uh, he was just talking. If, if I hope I'm not uh, speaking out of turn here. But uh, whenever he first pulled up to um, to meet us at our little storage spot where we were going to load in, you know, we got all our stuff and loaded up the trailer and we got on the bus. We're like, all right, we're ready to go. He's like, oh, shit, I thought it was going to take forever. He's like, when I get saliva, they just the bus shows up and they just start partying. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> lo- loadout takes like six, seven hours, man. <laughs> now, let's now let's keep in mind now. That was some years back. Th- things have, a lot of things have changed in the saliva camp, but but yes, that th- that sounds like a true story for that time. <laughs> <laughs> this would this is probably like ten years ago or so, maybe, yeah. maybe a little bit, yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe a little bit longer. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I just thought that was funny. No, man, and uh, I just yeah, um, bus drivers are a funny breed. Cause like you know, yes. you, like you have your band, you have like you know your guitar tech or stage manager, whatever you you know, um, your front of house, uh, merch seller, and all this stuff, and they're all a part of your crew, and you you all hire them personally, and you you all become very close. But when a random bus shows up with a driver you've never met before and you don't know, it's just, it's just luck of the draw, and uh, you're you're putting your life in this complete stranger's hands every night. You just hope that he's not you know flying on speed or really, God knows what's going on up there while you're asleep in your bunk. Uh, yeah, I mean, how, yeah. have you ever had any uh, uh, bus driver horror stories like that? Man, how much? How long is this show? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just give you uh, one. I mean, man, a bunch and some funny ones, but uh, I'll give you a short version of one that sticks out. Um, this guy picked us up. Uh, he drove great. It, we, we we had like a two day deadhead. He picked us up. I think in Memphis. And we were going to stop like somewhere out like Knoxville. He was going to sleep and then drive again like the next day or something. He seemed great, drove smooth. We got to where we were stopping over at and um, he was like, yeah, cool. So uh, he busts out a half gallon of vodka. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) And uh, so, but but at first we're thinking, well, you know, he drove all day. He can have a couple of drinks and then he go to bed you know i mean nothing wrong with that you know what i'm saying yeah um but so about half of that thing is gone now at this point he's belligerently (laughs) hammered drunk in the front line i'm in it like wasted uh (laughs) we had some guests he's like bad mouthing the guest and then then he he starts turning down the lights in the front lounge and said that we needed to go to the back because he was about to crash out for the night on the front lounge couch. And we're like, what? Uh, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we're oh off to a God. bad start. His yeah, name, we it, called him the Kurt. Yeah. His name wasn't Chip, was it? Uh, I, I don't know. We <laughs> his name, he's, we called him the Kurtster. He, call, he called himself the Kurtster. So, you know, he always spoke up, spoke to about himself in like third person and stuff. So oh there's already God. a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. 
God, bus drivers, man. And it's always they're they're so they're different in Europe though. That's like the the bus drivers in Europe are almost like a, a different level of crazy because they they actually do sleep on the bus. Like usually American, yes. you know, bus drivers, you send them to a hotel, they get to rest every night. That's a whole part of the deal. But yeah, the European bus drivers, that's just a, a new level of depravity that uh, I, I just can't believe how they Yeah, do that you're correct. We're actually going back to Europe uh, last week of January for six weeks. So, yeah, I, I I know, man. It's the whole different, not only the drivers, but the whole way of touring and how uh-huh. things work is completely different over there. You know, um, it's very interesting for sure. But the drivers, especially if you get one with the language barrier, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Oh, it yeah. makes it even more awkward. Well, there's a language barrier and they want to talk to you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. See, here, here, typically, the driver drives to the venue. Once the bus gets parked for the night, he takes off and goes to the hotel. He shows back up around, you know, a little bit before bus call to warm it up and check things out. Then he leaves, and then he gets to the next gig, and he goes back to the hotel. Yeah. There, it's, all right, cl- clocked out. It's party time. What time's the show start? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then they drink all your beer. <laughs> Like, hey man, right. we, we while you're on case, stage, yeah. they're drinking all your liquor, <laughs> and then they're going to drive you in the middle of the night to the Swiss house. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh my god. Well, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up. Obviously, uh, you know, click click boom was a huge song uh, that was on the Fast and Furious soundtrack, and um, th- that was back in the days when soundtracks were everything. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was almost like one of those weird things where bands would make an album and then withhold songs just to have something to put on soundtracks whenever they would come out. Um, and, and, uh, that was, Absolutely. that was kind of like the tail end of that. But I mean, uh, how uh, we, we were talking about, you know, like obviously video game commercials or WrestleMania, things like that. But, um, how, how, how big do you think a factor was like being on like movie soundtracks, uh, to y'all success back in the day? Uh, I mean, first and foremost, especially those, especially the first two records, musically they were good i think they were destined to be good anyway but yeah, obviously yeah. those those things helped in a great way because you you you're you get out to a way bigger audience than you would have been out with you know what i mean mm-hmm. not everybody listens to rock radio but everybody probably went and seen talladega nights or fast and the furious uh-huh. in the theater at the time and you know those that's those songs were in those movies so you're like you know and like you said, the soundtracks at the time was like, was a big deal, man. You know, I used to go buy the soundtrack CDs, like for all, all the movies and stuff. 100%. So it was really, really cool. They, there's no doubt that, that that helped, you know, in a big way. Because like, th- that was sort of like when my band was coming up, was like right the like the last week that MTV played videos before they like, you know, shut the switch off <laughs> and everything like that. Yeah. So we really relied on, and, and also we weren't really necessarily like a radio band, you know, like we just didn't sound like, what was going on at the time. So things like that, like licensing, syncing, um, like in video games and stuff was just huge for us. And that was like the, um, the, the first, I feel like transition from when labels were starting to realize like, shit, things are changing. We don't know what to do. You know, like, uh, the internet right. is becoming more, uh, you know, a thing. What, what was that like? Um, uh, just kind of witnessing those transitions and just navigating that whole landscape. Man, challenging for one, but, um, we, uh, we kind of learned, learned as, as we went, you know, at, at first you're hesitant to, to, to roll with the changes. You're like, how this can't be happening or right. whatnot. But I mean, you just kind of learn as you go, man. And, and, and I mean, heck, even to this day, we're still learning. Things are changing. Like it seems like every other week uh-huh. there's a new platform or a new something or a new way to submit stuff. I mean, it's, you know, even, you know, even like fe- the festival stuff with the COVID thing. And I mean, it's just, I don't know, man, you just kind of got to, adapt and overcome man that's pretty much the only way to to deal with it you know mm-hmm. yeah i mean uh have you been out yet uh since uh the restrictions are kind of like lightening up a little bit man i will tell you this for about the first four months or so when the initial lockdowns happened uh-huh. we sat home and after that we have not not been on the road for any length of time i mean we we were I don't know how, but we stayed playing. We played in South Dakota. We went to Alaska. We somehow, some way played, even if it was only like two weekends a month, we somehow uh-huh. played through the whole entire thing. So um, I, I guess we were the fortunate ones. Yeah, it was crazy because that was the longest stretch of time that I had gone without playing a show in like 25 years. 
I think, you know, since I was oh, like yeah. 15 or something like that, I just couldn't believe it. I was just sitting there watching the time go by and all of our tours just kind of kept getting pushed back and back and back. And I was, <laughs> after a while there, I was like, are we ever going to play again? And be, uh, coming through it all, I left it, that, that whole experience just with the mentality of like, I'm never going to take a show for granted ever again. I don't yeah. care if it's piss and rain and freezing and fucking there's 15 people there. I don't care. Like, you know, <laughs> it puts perspective on it, doesn't it? <laughs> it really, not that I ever took it for granted before, but you know what I, yeah, there's a, right. every no, tour I, has I that one it. stinker, you know, I um, absolutely get it, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but it's got, it's so good to be back. I'm really excited to see y'all going to Europe so soon. Um, cause we're starting to, I can't say much, but we're, we're, looking at like summer 2023 even just because so many things have been pushed back that even 2022 is all booked up now over there. And yeah. Stuff. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's crazy seeing uh booking agents right now booking a tour and they're back in the day, you know, your agent would, you know, put out some feelers, get some offers and then put together a tour routing for you. And then um, now they have to do double the work. They have to book two tours basically every time, because if anybody gets sick, then they have to like every club and theater has like sixty holds deep of like bands waiting to play, and so uh, and then, it's insane. It, it, it's yeah, nothing like I've ever seen. I, I just I, I'm I'm sure it'll chill out eventually, but not anytime soon. And it's yeah, uh, it's, it's going to take a minute to catch up, man. You know, even like uh, you know, it's not even just that. I don't have you tried to get get like a song mixed lately or, or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you're like they're like, yeah, I can mix it for you. Um spring of twenty twenty three. Yeah. You know, you're like, you know, it's so it's a trickle down effect. You know, everybody wants to release music now because uh-huh. what did everybody do the entire lockdown in bands? Yeah. Wrote music. That's yeah. what you did. You know what I'm saying? So it's a trickle down effect. It it is it's gonna take a minute to catch up. It'll eventually catch up, but it's gonna be kind of crazy and hectic for a minute i think it man. was uh, the, the merchandise companies too because like even trying to get your t-shirts printed you know like sometimes yeah. there's just there there are no yellow shirts you know this uh, our merchandise company indie merch uh thank the lord for them they uh they put a semi truck just parked it in their uh parking lot with like fifty thousand black t-shirts in it just in case <laughs> you know what i mean They're yeah. like, they didn't want to run Good out deal. of shirts you know what i mean like, yeah it's nuts and they, even then like ahead. yeah yeah and uh you want to make a baseball tee well forget about it you know they're, they're gone you want to make a baseball hat or anything like that they're gone like you have to you just yeah. kind of have to make what you can it's um it's always been a cutthroat industry i feel like but even more so these days um it's nuts it's fucking crazy it, it, it is man feast or famine and right now it's famine i guess you yeah, know tell, so. me, tell me about <laughs> our it, feast right feast. now right now it's yeah. feast for sure uh um, yes. with everybody yeah trying to book tours and everything like that it's yeah, yeah. and then um but uh so yeah after being in that band for so long um uh you started uh yeah cold wars with your kids that's fucking awesome man like yeah what, I, I, me and my daughter did a little uh so she's only you know four and a half but uh we did a couple tracks together over the pandemic that was just like fun little rock songs i made a seven inch out of and it, it just it made me more happy than I think of a record that I, you know, spent $80,000 on like, you know, uh, making it in like a a real deal studio with all this shit. Uh, What's it like? Yeah. Being in a band with your kids. It's pretty epic, man. And, and I want to do a, a, uh, explain the name really fast. Originally when we started this, we were pronouncing it cold wards, like a hospital ward, like a psychiatric ward, Uh but, we right before the release, we decided to ca- ca- pronounce it cold words, like to- like emotion, like forwards, like towards, okay. like emotion, emotion towards the cold. So cold words. So I, it's kind of pronounced, I guess, like cold words. Uh huh. So, um, but anyway, it's amazing making uh, making music with them. You know, it started off just having my one of my sons sing on a track I was kind of writing, and then. We had the other one sing on some, and then we were like, "Let's let, let's let's just write some music together." Then it just morphed into this whole whole thing, man. It's uh, it's pretty it's pretty awesome to be able to do that with them. Yeah, are you going to keep it going? Like, try to take it on the road? Absolutely. Well, yeah, we're we're uh, you know the, the single hit radio November second. We're we're going to see what it does, man. If there if there if a demand comes for it, then yes, we would love to nothing more than to than to go on some tours and, and all that good stuff if people want to see it. Um, 
I'm sure at some point, regardless of any of that, we'll probably do a, at least a short run with saliva. At least, to, you know, we'll do some we'll do some shows in some fashion. Hopefully, hopefully people enjoy it and and want and there's a demand for it and we are able to do some actual, you know, bigger tours. I think so, man, because, you know, it's uh, I know the term uh, I, I, I hate being pigeonholed myself but or any kind of genre name or whatever it's, it's all rock and roll if you ask me but especially just with what's going on right now in the climate these days like the, the whole new metal vibe is seeming to have some kind of you know resurgence that um like not like it ever went away uh because yeah. I mean, we, we've been touring europe forever and you go see you know papa roach playing like you know fifty thousand people are just like losing their fucking mind you know but um yeah it's, but it just seemed like it, t- it there was a bit of a lull in the states for it for a while but i think it's coming back man um uh, yeah i mean has, has that affected how, how y'all book tours or anything like that has, has that been a part of like your strategy is just like a the, the 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 waxing and waning popularity of like genre kind of based rock and roll Man, as far as saliva goes, we we just go where the de- you know where the demand is, and it's the same way we're going to do with the cold words as well, man. Uh-huh. Uh, if people come through, motors start hitting us up and saying, "Hey, we got people wanting you come. Do you want to come do a show? We'll do it." Um, and with cold words, man, I kind of like for I kind of like term it more new rock than new metal. Uh-huh. Um, I hate genres too, like like you. Uh, as well but um you know the thing is is as people hear more and more songs they all don't not they don't all sound like say something that you know some of them are just like kind of more medley flying double bass growly vocals and then we have a, a song that's like an acoustic song with a drum loop behind it you know what i mean mm-hmm. so um but I mean, I definitely see how it kind of, it kind of has that like new metally kind of maybe a little flavor to it. But but like I said, I we want to change the term to new rock. I, like I think that. it's you know it's a little bit more modern twist on it. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like I said, it's all rock and roll to me, man. It's just uh, absolutely. But, but people it's out there, the, 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 you know, all the journalists, they have to like uh, put a label on something. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just how it goes. That's for them. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I know you have the single out that just dropped, but um, do you have a? Uh, is there a, a finished record that you're uh, that you're waiting to drop, or is yeah. it uh, you're just kind of still making it right now? The record is called Bloodwork. There will be there's ten tracks. It is they're all it, everything is tracked. We are just waiting on uh, like two mixes, I think, and then mastering. So it, it's pretty much complete. It's 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 completely recorded. It's almost done. We're definitely going to be able to get it out. Um, early spring 2022. Awesome. If if you put your final order in right now, you might be able to get it by like 2037. I think. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I have never seen uh, any kind of manufacturing be that backed up before. Vinyl just like yeah. took such a crazy hit because like you know. I guess the Beatles needed to repress, uh, you know, 500,000 copies of uh, <laughs> all their old records and shit. Something happened somewhere, time. man, but. But you know what was great about all of that, though, is that that means that there's an extremely high demand for for new music, which is great for us artists. So, totally. you know, totally, man, I, I, I can't wait to see where it all takes you, man, because um, like the, the, the new single say something. It's awesome. Uh, do you mind if we play it at the end of the show? Yeah, absolutely. Please awesome. do. Well, we're going to put it on there. And uh, yeah, man, it's just it's, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, brother. And uh, I got a lot of respect for what y'all do and just hanging in there uh, over all these years. It's just, it, it's not fucking easy at all. You know, no. it, 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 it takes a, a special kind uh, to keep going and just, just like you said, you just got to continually adapt and um, yeah. Just, uh, and I deal just, with and dealing with all those bus drivers all through the 20 <laughs> some odd years, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, we'll have to do a part two one time where we actually talk about all those stories. <laughs> Man, I've got a whole episode just of bus driver stories, man. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, brother. Well, hey, man, uh, Paul, thank you so much for coming on. Everybody check out Cold Words' uh, new record. Whenever the record comes out, check it out. We're going to play the uh, single Say Something right now. And, uh, dude, much respect. Thank you. Always on the outside, looking through the glass Lost in what I can't find, don't know where I'm at Trying but it feels like I'm slipping through the cracks One step forward and two steps back Can anybody tell me why I feel so lost? Don't anybody speak out once you say something, say something Hearing voices in my head, I think I'm going crazy It's like I'm in a daydream, I need someone to wake me Feel like I'm too far gone for anyone around to see me 
Tuning into the highway this week. A big shout out to Reverend Guitars, Railhammer Pickups, and Earthquaker Devices. If you liked what you heard, you can follow where you can follow, subscribe where you can subscribe, and if you want to go one step further, you can support us on Patreon at the Highway with Kyle Shutt. For a few bucks a month, you can help us keep this party going, get early access to next week's episode, and even get yourself a shout out. 